Welcome to the All Out Leadership Podcast, hosted by Pastor Eric Lawson, where each episode is uniquely designed to help you live all out by bringing you practical leadership from a biblical perspective delivered in 10 minutes or less. So whether you're a business leader, serving in ministry, or simply looking to grow in your leadership, this podcast is for you. Before we dive into this week's topic, make sure to subscribe to the podcast and download the show notes at ericlawson.com forward slash podcast. And while you're at it, feel free to share the content on social media. Now, let's join Pastor Eric for this week's conversation. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the All Out Leadership Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about sharpening the axe. I want to give you a famous quote from Abraham Lincoln. He said, give me six hours to chop down a tree, and I'll spend the first four hours sharpening the axe. This is actually a biblical principle that comes from the wisdom of Solomon in Ecclesiastes 10.10. He said, if the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength, but wisdom will bring success. We as leaders must always continually be sharpening the axe. A lot of times we're focused on learning that new great idea that'll catapult our revenue, catapult our sales, increase our customer base, or as a church, cause us to reach more people. And we're focused on what is new. When what you'll often find is it's not that we necessarily need a bunch of new things to succeed. We need to go back and repolish the acts, the, the, the things we already know to do. In fact, when you look at sports, it's the teams who continually go back and polish up the basics, sharpening the basics and fundamentals of the game that are often the greatest players inside of that sport. John Wooden, uh, arguably one of the greatest coaches in college basketball of all times. He had a winning record of 664 over 162 uh, games. The guy was just unbeatable. His longest streak was 88 games in a row. He, he was awarded the NCAA College Basketball Coach of the Year six times, uh, and inducted eventually into the Basketball Hall of Fame, uh, and he, he, he just was an incredible leader. And what he was known for was continually going back and working with his teams on mastering the basics. In fact, he did something that was very unusual. At the beginning of every new practice season, uh, and people are coming in, they're experiencing there might be replete players, people who've played many seasons already with them. This is how he began. The first thing he had everybody do was take off their shoes and socks. And he had them learn to put on their socks properly and then how to tie their shoes properly. Like that's almost an insult to somebody who's made it to college ball, right? But his philosophy was this. If you don't properly know how to put on your socks, which apparently some people don't, you're going to get blisters. And if you're going to get blisters, you aren't going to be able to play in the game. Secondly, if you don't know how to properly tie your shoes, chances are inside of practice, you're going to sprain your ankle. If you aren't pra- if you sprain your ankle, you're going to miss practice and you aren't going to be able to play with the team. He started with just the basics. And then he went on from there to continue working on more and more things basics. And so what we're going to do in this month is we're going to just go back and sharpen our saw. Probably not going to give you some revelatory thing you've never heard, but maybe something you just need to be reminded of, something you just need to be resharpened in as a leader as we're going into this next year. So I'm going to start with the one that we all know, and that is goals. Ooh, deep thoughts. No, but let's just sharpen our saw a little bit when it comes to the subjects of goals. Uh, A reminder, 83% of the population don't have any goals. So good news, you can be in the top 17%, just get a goal. Now only uh, 14% have plans, but they don't have them in writing. And if you don't have them in writing, it's really just a daydream that ultimately becomes a nightmare. Only 3% of the population still, (laughs) after decades now of the same research, same statistics, and more motivational research materials than ever, 3% of the population still have only written down their goals. Research shows that you're 42% more likely to achieve your goals if they're written down. You know the statement, aim at nothing, and you're going to hit it every time. And people get to the end of their life and they're disappointed with their finances. It's probably because you didn't have a goal and you didn't have it in writing. They get disappointed with their marriage, all six of them. It's probably because they didn't have a vision for their marriage and didn't write it down. Too many people are living and navigating by Charlie Brown's method of success. And that is they shoot the bow and arrow at the fence. They go over with a red can of paint and paint a bullseye wherever that arrow landed. 
Proverbs 29, verse 18 makes it very clear. Where there is no vision, the people perish. If you're perishing somewhere, maybe your company's perishing in its culture. Maybe your company's perishing in its turnover. Maybe your company's perishing uh, wherever. It often goes back to a clarity of vision issue. And so let's just go back and re-examine our vision. So you got goals. Now, many of you and most of you probably listening already have goals. You probably already have them in writing. Now it's time to get them out and make sure that you are reviewing them, asking yourself, are these still relevant? Do you need to tweak them? And you know what? You need permission. So I give it to you. I give you permission to delete goals and change goals and add goals. Often what you'll find is we'll write down goals in certain seasons of life. And and then over time, uh, God begins to mature you. Maybe something inside of your, your company shifts and all of a sudden you got a new direction. And a lot of the things that you thought were important maybe no longer matter. Well, don't be afraid to go ahead and delete it. Look, who's standing over your shoulder? Like holding you accountable that, man, if, if you delete that goal, you're a loser. No, you aren't. That's just smart. Why keep aiming at something that doesn't matter anymore? And so go ahead. When I was a kid, I, I had the goal, I'm going to climb Mount Everest. You know why I had that goal? Because it sounded cool and you hear a bunch of people go, they're going to climb Mount Everest. So I wrote it down. I actually had it on a piece of paper. Then as I got older and started watching more movies on Mount Everest, realizing there's a bunch of dead bodies up there, I go, you know what? I don't really need this. And who really cares? So I didn't have a passion to go conquer Mount Everest. Honestly, I, I'm a bigger mountain to conquer than Mount Everest. If I could conquer me, that's far better than conquering Mount Everest. And I don't have to get frostbite doing it. All right. So I, I deleted that off my goal. Now I've added other things of more value since then. So review them. Next, ask yourself and just review, are each one of these goals your SMART goals? Let's go through the acronym again. We're just sharpening our saw. I'm not insulting you. I know you know this. We're just sharpening the ax. Because as we use them, it gets dull over time. So here we go. Specific. Are your goals specific? Next, are they measurable? A great book I highly recommend, uh, if you haven't yet read it, is Measure What Matters by John Dewar. Uh, it's, it'll talk about the concept of OKRs, uh, Objective by Key Results, Objectives by Key Results. We use that here uh, at Element Church within our staff. And as we're taking goals and fleshing them out into actually measurable, attainable steps, it's been transformed formative for our team, very empowering, energizing. And uh, honestly, you only need to read the first few chapters of the book because the rest of the book just repeats itself. So I'm going to give you permission to just read a couple chapters and not read the rest of it. So there you go. Uh, for the four of you that want to read the whole thing, God bless you. Go for it. Uh, next, are they attainable? So uh, many of the goals sometimes we'll set, they're just not realistic. They're not attainable. Like for me, uh, you know, I, if I were to set a goal, I'm going to be an NFL linebacker. Look, Praise God. He's a miracle working God. I just don't think there's anything that's ever going to happen for me to make it in the NFL as a linebacker. I could work out all I want. I could get every coach. I could drink every power drink. I mean, I, I could I, I could just devote the next 10 years to that. And you know what's going to happen? I'm going to be a 63-year-old who got one inning in the NFL. And it would be first play, go, down, set, I'm dead, right? That's not a realistic goal, and it's a waste of time. So some of your goals, they're just not realistic, and so uh, that that just food for thought. Next, a realistic timeline. Maybe your goal's realistic, but the timeline to get it done is just not. What we do here at Element is we really work to reach our timelines, but I'd rather reach 60% of it and go, you know what? 60% was really good. We're going to go ahead and roll that 40% over into the next uh, quarter. Uh, we do trimesters. We're going to do the next trimester in terms of our goals or our OKRs and give ourselves permission to go, we want to get it right. So we're going to roll a portion of that over. So we always have rolling goals. And what we find, though, is we get much more done that matters. Uh, we don't get it all done, but we get much more done uh, that matters because we had goals, because they were set into measurable steps called OKRs, then had we not done that. And then next, that there's some time-bound aspect to it, that you have some type of deadline, because we all know the law of expanding time. Whatever amount of time you allow for something, that's how long it'll take. The last time you tell your kids, hey, go clean your room. How's that going? It only works when you give them a deadline. I need you to have this room cleaned in the next 60 minutes. I'm going to come back and check on it. And if you don't say something like that, they'll be in there forever. 
getting sidetracked. And the last thing is this, you got to keep your goals visible. Habakkuk 2.2, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. Keep your goals visible. Here at Element Church, what I have inside of my own office, to me it's kind of a mini war room. I have our mission statement in vinyl up above our calendar. I have our core values up over our whiteboards uh, with the the cool little slogan statements, the power statements that go with that. I have Habakkuk 2.2 written up in vinyl above my project management board where I have the key goals that my executive team is working with their teams to drive down the field. And they're on nice little note cards that, you know, I can, I can, once they, um, it goes from to do, to started, to stalled, to completed, and it's all visible. It's right here. And when somebody's moving down the field, I can take that project and I can move it right down the field. It's there. I ask questions. They see it. Nowhere to hide, baby. It's awesome. I love my office. All right. There you go. Sharpening the ax. Next week, I'm going to talk about the importance of Now that we got goals, now that they're specific, how do we stay motivated to get those done? And that's one of the greatest things that trip us up is the motivation aspect to follow through. We're going to get into some of those tips next week. Thank you for joining us on the All Out Leadership Podcast. We hope you gained new biblical insight that challenged you to grow in your leadership. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, we would love your help in getting the content out farther. You can help by subscribing to the podcast at ericlawson.com forward slash podcast and telling others about it. Next week, Pastor Eric will be back with another episode. So until then, we hope you have a great week being an all-out leader.